But there's a couple of competing ones that are big. The main competing one is Solana. So Solana is a faster, cheaper blockchain, maybe less decentralized, but certainly less, less deep and broad in the number of developers working on it, number of applications, but it's rising up fast. So that is another system. So you might find another 5G provider that's not T-Mobile and you might want to use them instead. And maybe they've got different benefits. Then on top of that, there's another type of blockchain that's coming up in the in the background, which is the Move protocol, which came out of Facebook, DM. And there's a, um, a blockchain like Sui UI, which is another very fast, very cheap, but very innovative blockchains. The realm of cryptocurrency is not just evolving. It's on the brink of what some are predicting to be the most significant bull market in its history. Visionaries like Raul Paul, the founder and CEO of Real Vision and a former Goldman Sachs executive, are at the forefront, articulating predictions that intertwine deeply with both technological innovation and macroeconomic trends. Paul's projection, especially for the 2024 and 2025 bull market, underscore an era that could redefine the financial landscape for Bitcoin, Ethereum, Solana, and the broader cryptocurrency sector. Paul's anticipation of Bitcoin soaring to unprecedented heights, over $200,000 per coin by May, and potentially reaching up to a million dollars, reflects a bullish sentiment grounded not just in optimism, but in a detailed analysis of market dynamics and technological advancements. This optimism is not isolated to Bitcoin, Ethereum and Solana, along with other promising layer 1 tokens are also on Paul's radar for substantial growth. For instance, his projection of Solana experiencing a 47 times increase from its previous cycle lows and potentially hitting a peak of $1000 per coin signifies a staggering forecast of growth and investor gains. This optimistic outlook is supported by a confluence of bullish factors including technological advancements, wider adoption rates, regulatory clarity, and an increasing recognition of cryptocurrencies as a legitimate and vital component of the global financial system. The anticipated crypto and macro summer, as Paul describes, hints at a period where cryptocurrency investments are not just about the speculative gains, but are deeply integrated with broader economic trends and cycles. Furthermore, the timing of these predictions coincides with significant milestones within the cryptocurrency world, such as the Bitcoin halving event, a mechanism that reduces the reward for mining Bitcoin transactions by half, theoretically leading to a decrease in supply and a potential increase in price if demand remains constant. This event has historically signaled the start of previous bull runs, lending credence to Paul's predictions. The discussion between Raul Paul and Anthony Scaramucci, which illuminated these projections, underscore a broader dialogue within the financial sector about the potential of cryptocurrencies. As institutional interest grows and innovations within the space continue to emerge, the stage is set for what could indeed be a transformative period for cryptocurrencies. We are in the crypto macro spring to summer transition. That is when liquidity starts coming into the system. It happens to co correspond with the US election cycle, because obviously politicians can't help but give out candy around election time. Yes, of course. It's also the Bitcoin halving time. So Bitcoin halving um, reduces the supply. And then there was the ETF. So basically, we've got a perfect setup of liquidity, plus new demand, yes. plus reduced supply. And so the rest of the year should play out the same way. I mean, I continue to be very bullish this year and very bullish for most of next year. Raul Paul's analysis and predictions about the cryptocurrency market are steeped in a profound understanding of both historical financial trends and current economic policies. A key pillar of his outlook is the perpetual debasement of fiat currencies, a concern heightened by central banks' expansive monetary policies, notably since the 2008 financial crisis. According to Paul, these policies, especially the large-scale asset purchases 
and lowering of interest rates to near zero levels were attempts to stabilize the banking and real estate sectors. However, Paul argues that these maneuvers, while postponing a financial reckoning, have not averted it. Instead, they have set the stage for a final crisis that is drawing ever closer. Paul's perspective is rooted in a critique of central banking practices over the last few decades. The quantitative easing QE measures initiated in the wake of the 2008 crisis have led to an unprecedented expansion of central bank balance sheets. Critiques of QE argue that such policies contribute to the erosion of the purchasing power of fiat currencies over time, fostering an environment where investors increasingly seek out safe haven assets. Gold has traditionally played this role, but Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies are emerging as new havens. Their fixed supply contrasts sharply with the ability of central banks to issue more currency making them particularly attractive during times of financial uncertainty. Bitcoin's appeal as a safe haven asset is further magnified by its potential for substantial returns. Cryptocurrencies offer everyday investors opportunities that are rare in other asset classes. The possibility of maintaining and even exponentially growing one's wealth through strategic investments in digital assets without succumbing to the pitfalls of excessive leverage represents a novel frontier in personal finance. The former Goldman Sachs executive's advice to avoid greed and leverage is particularly poignant in the context of cryptocurrency investing. The market's notorious volatility can amplify losses as much as it can magnify the gains, making disciplined investment strategies crucial. Because Bitcoin is basically a share of a network, the more people who join the network, the more value goes up. So as the ETF brings people in, as people start fearing the governments and their deficits, they start looking for different solutions. One of the reasons gold has been rallying is the same. So what we're seeing is this was the most successful launch of any ETF in all history, which tells you it's not just an, an ETF. It's that the idea of Bitcoin itself is resonating with people. They kind of know they're getting screwed somewhere by the system and this feels like a way of getting higher returns with more volatility, but it kind of saves them from what is going on. So let's assume that this is the largest ETF launch in history and a lot of newbies have come in. Well, it's happening at a magic time. The magic time is what's known as the Bitcoin halving. So new Bitcoin comes onto the market via miners, Bitcoin miners, who undergo huge kind of mathematical calculations to produce a Bitcoin. There is a fixed number of Bitcoins that can be produced each year. So it's a competition to produce them. So you need a lot of computing power. And then every four years, the algorithm of Bitcoin itself halves the number. So if there were a hundred Bitcoin being produced by miners every day, whatever the number is, um, right now, after April 20th, it goes to 50. So there's more people coming into the market, which is new demand, and new supply is shrinking. So all the time, the only supply is really sellers of Bitcoin who hold Bitcoin right now. But Bitcoin's one of these weird assets where 80% of all holders just hoard it, like you and I. We just don't do anything with it, we just hold it. 